So can you tell us more, Jess? Sure. So campaigns have been planned and executed with key branding objectives in mind. And these branding objectives can range anywhere between the brand funnel. So the brand funnel ranges from awareness at the very top, which is looking to drive reach for brands, all the way down the consumer purchase journey to driving action. The intention of brand impact studies is to measure if we've achieved these campaign objectives and how successful the campaign has been generally for brands. So can you give us an example of how this might work for a client? Sure, so let's say we have an FMCG brand. Their main objective is to drive awareness. We had a look at the results and we saw that there was a significant uplift amongst those exposed to the campaign versus a control group of those who hadn't been exposed to the campaign. What this means is we've run a statistical analysis and we can say to the client with 95% confidence that the uplift was significant and not due to chance. So to put more simply for the client, being exposed to their campaign has made their consumers more aware of the FMCG brand. Okay, so that looks great from an awareness perspective, but can you give any more examples on how that might work with some other common metrics that are used within brand impact studies? Yes, so let's say we look further down the brand funnel to consideration. Um, We had a look at the results again, and we saw a 4% uplift for those exposed to the campaign versus a control group of those who haven't been exposed. This isn't a significant shift, it's only 4%, but for the brand, this is still a success. Most commonly, when we look at consideration for FMCG products, they're already especially highly considered. So what this means is that people don't think too much when they look to purchase FMCG products. And so it's harder to shift that consideration metric for brands. We know this because we have aggregated all of the data from our brand effectiveness studies to create benchmarks across the brand funnel. Can you explain a little bit more about benchmarks and why these are so important when determining campaign success? Sure, so we have pulled together data from more than a thousand brand effectiveness studies Um, And it's allowed us to create robust databases for digital advertising, social media advertising, and out-of-home advertising. Because of the number of studies, it it has allowed us to create category benchmarks, meaning that we can filter the data for FMCG brands, retail brands, finance brands, entertainment brands, and more for our clients. Essentially, when we look back at this consideration objective, we know the uplift that we would expect to see for FMCG brands because we have it in our benchmark database. So if the usual consideration uplift is plus 2% for FMCG brands, then we know, what we know is our client who has had a 4% uplift is actually outperforming our benchmark. So essentially this isn't a success for the brand because they're outperforming the market average and outperforming their competitors. That makes complete sense and really highlights why benchmarking is so important. If you could summarise all the key points that advertisers should be taking on board when determining campaign success, what would these be? I think there's three key points to look at here. I think there's the core point of has the campaign achieved its key objectives that were set in the very beginning. I think secondly, we should look at has being exposed to the advertising placed consumers in a more positive place along the brand funnel compared to consumers who haven't been exposed to the advertising. And thirdly, putting it all into context. So how has your campaign really performed compared to the market average? Thank you, Jess, for that really insightful overview. Thank you. We hope you found this short video today useful. But if you have any further questions on understanding how your campaign is really performing, then please do get in touch and visit us today at ondeviceresearch.com.